How dark is your bedroom when you sleep at night? Maybe not dark enough. All right. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zell. Dr. Brad Meaning. We're going to review an abstract which was presented at the American Heart Association meeting Did you go to this, this meeting? year. No, I didn't okay. go to this meeting, but I read about this abstract, which okay. was really interesting to me. Yeah. It was looking at the amount of light exposure you have at night when you're trying to sleep or when yep. you're asleep and trying to compare it to heart disease. Okay. All right. And what they did was they looked at how much light people were exposed to, and they did this by looking at satellite data for the area they live in okay. and light sensors in the people's rooms. Okay. okay. And then they followed them along for a long period of time. Yeah. And they looked at the incidence of heart disease. All right. Okay. And they did PET scans on the people to look at activity in, in the, the brain. brain. Okay. okay. And they controlled for variables like other health measures, socioeconomic status, that kind of stuff. Right. What's okay. a PET scan? Not a scan that you take your dog or cat to. PET scan is a type of scan that looks at activity in your tissues. Okay. Like so metabolic activity. Yeah. They take a radio uh, radioactive tracer, I guess, that yep. decays over time. Fluorine 18, I think, is the most common. They attach it to a glucose molecule or something like a glucose molecule, which is like a sugar analog. Zero dose. And those are taken up in metabolically active tissue. All right. right? So like cancer cells or brain, parts of the brains that are working. Right. So different tissues in your body that are active will take up more of this and that'll give off a signal. And okay. they can capture that signal and show you where there's more activity. Okay. So like a CT scan shows you anatomy. Yes. A PET scan shows you activity. Nice. Put them together and you got the anatomy and the activity. Nice. I like so, that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so they did that to look into the brains. And so what did they find? They found a nearly linear relationship from the amount of light that you're exposed to while you're sleeping to the incidence of heart disease and specific cardiovascular events. And PET scan findings that showed increased activity, increased things like inflammation, uh, different things that can harden the arteries that might explain why these people have a higher incidence. They also talked about an increased measurable difference in brain stress, like your right. brain was stressed when yeah. you were exposed to light while you were sleeping. You get stressed out while you sleep. Well, and who's kidding who? If anyone that suffers from insomnia, and please share if you do, mm -hmm. is going to say, you know what, I actually do have a lot of stress when I can't sleep. My wife wears blindfolds sometimes when she, I, you know, I thought it's because she didn't like my pajamas, but turns out she knows it's important to sleep I think in I'd the dark. Wear, I'd wear a blindfold if I was looking at your pajamas Probably for sure. Would. Um, okay, so how long did, did they follow these people for a long time? I think it was like uh, initially from 2005, 2008 is where they had the initial PET scans and they right. followed them up until like 2016 or something like that. So right, and a significant number of these 450 people, like 17% of them had events. Yeah. And then they correlated it back to the amount of light they said. And they said, well, look, the more light you have, the higher your risk of having something negative happen. Yeah, so the five-year incidence was 35% higher in the people that didn't get the dark sleep right. at five years and then 22% at 10-year chance, yeah. increased chance of something bad happening to you, to your heart, over and, time. And there have been other studies that have measured this. Even there's a small study at Northwestern where they had 20 people and they exposed them a certain amount of light, had light sensors actually on their person and measured um, their heart rate overnight, which went up. They measured blood glucose and the more they became more essentially insulin resistant, even after one day of disrupted, like light disrupted sleep. Like even one day was bad for you. Now we know living in environments where there's a lot of noise pollution and other things can be bad for you. Now we know, or we think we know, that there is light pollution hazard effects on your on your health. Right, and it's funny that you say that because I thought cause I live a little bit more in the country. I thought, well, has there any, ever been a study to show like you know city slickers versus country folk? Mm -hmm. There's never been a study, but intuitively you could say, well. You ever gone camping and you look outside and you're like, I yeah. can't, you can't even see your hand in front of your face, it's so dark. Yeah. Whereas if you're downtown somewhere, like it's so much brighter. So intuitively, I think that's part of the problem. I think you lose the benefit on the drive-in. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but what I would say is that one of the biggest problems for light at night right now for us as a society is your phone. Oh man. Your phone is beside your bed. And even if you sound the alarm still, there can be little alerts, it's still kind of going bright. And one study showed that even if you look, like I was like, okay, what happens if, say I, I couldn't stay up for the whole Jays game, right? Right. Oh, and then uh, I, game and then went on to 18 innings. Game three of the World Series. And say, yeah. say I wake up at two in the morning and deep in my mind, I'm like, I'm curious, did they win, did they lose? Even checking your phone for 30 seconds has measurable negative effects on, on your melatonin, your inflammation, your blood sugar. So yeah. resist the temptation to check your phone. B, consider turning it, at a minimum, turning it over. Yeah. Use the night setting, dim the brightness, stop the alarms, and then if you can't do that, put it in a drawer, put it in a box, like put it yeah. away. 
And it's not only the phone, a lot of chargers now light up too. Little bright. Yeah, like yeah. the red light or the green light and all those things. So I have a bunch of those in my, in my room, which I'm going to now cover up. Right. I consider blackout blinds. I think for me, I was like, well, why doesn't everybody just get blackout blinds? Yeah. Well, I think maybe it's not practical for everyone to. And I think a lot of people don't know how important it is to get restorative sleep. Oh, and one way, to, and one way to get that is by having a cool, dark room. Um, one thing we will say is this was an abstract, so yep. it's not a peer-reviewed publication, but it probably will become one in the future. So you're going to see this in a journal soon, hopefully. And two, it's an association, not a cause and effect thing. Right. And I, and I think not everything in life has to have an RCT. We've said this before. Yeah. Like, I don't need a randomized control trial to tell me that wearing a seatbelt is going to protect me in a car accident. No. Right? I don't know. I didn't Fair enough. And I would say having a room that is perfectly black is going to probably provide a better sleep than a room that is bright. Like, yeah. I think we've talked about this before. You go to those hotels and sometimes it's so dark yeah. and they're like, anybody's going to be like, Man, like, and it, it's it's yeah. brilliant because then the hotel gets you thinking. You know what? Yeah. I get my best sleep at a hotel. I love going to a hotel. They yeah. give you a good bed. They cool the room down. They make it nice and dark. Yeah. Give you a good sleep. You're like, I love this hotel. I slept in a hotel on Times Square once though, and it right. was not super dark. bright. Right, it was not a dark room. Okay, so the take home message is: set yourself up for a win when it comes to sleeping. Go watch our video of the eight kind of helpful tips for a restful, restorative night's sleep. But light is definitely one of them. Try to minimize the amount of ambient light you have inside of your house just so that you can get a better sleep. So are you telling people to watch Talking with Doc so they have a good sleep? No, not <laughs> in the middle of the night. Resist that temptation. Some of our videos are that boring <laughs> that you will fall asleep. I can guarantee it. But the, li the light from it is a problem. But if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone they think maybe needs to turn the lights down in their bedroom. Okay, right now, shut your phone off. Go to bed. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.